In this lesson we'll cover angular material forms from Firestore and that includes pulling the data that is required from Firestore and using them as inputs. In the previous lesson we created an app that has navigation for books and within a book we can look at the book detail. We're going to add the edit capability along with the, this form. This form is going to contain every material component that's possible. You can check the lesson, but the first thing that we're going to do is do a git clone of lesson 11. Put that in a new folder as we're going to work from where we were once previously at. Don't forget to run git remote remove origin and then you can add your own repo back in. The final step that you'll want to do is npm install. This should complete all our setup tasks. The next thing that we need to do is create a new module and component that is the book edit component. We're going to add routing to this so that we can navigate to it easily from any of our URLs for our book detail. Now that we have our module created, we can update our current books routing module so that it points at our new edit route and we have to point that to the correct lazy loaded module called book edit routing. Sorry, called book edit. Now that we've updated the books routing module to point to our book edit module, we need to remember to update the book edit routing module as well. So its base empty path will load the book edit component. You can then do ng serve and start up the server and we'll check out where we're at. You should be able to see the list of books and when navigating to a book we don't have a way to access edit yet so you can do slash edit and what will come up is our new edit screen. I like to add material card to any form that I'm laying out. It just gives it a nice looking structure. You don't have to do this but we're going to do it in this example. Um, in order to add that card we're going to need to import into our book edit module both the flex layout module and the material card module to give it both the appearance of a card as well as being able to lay it out with flex layout. Since we need to get the book ID from the current route that we're in, we're going to add both the Firestore service for getting the data from our Firestore backend as well as the router for the activated route. Now with the router's param map we can subscribe to, we can get the book ID from it and pass that into our Firestore service to get the book object. So this will collect the document from Firestore and we'll have all of the data that we need. The Firestore service for the Git book will actually return an observable. We'll assign that to a local observable and then use that within the HTML. In order to clean up our subscribable, since we need to subscribe during the entire session in case something changes, we will add this to an array and then on our destroy we'll loop through the array and unsubscribe to any subscribed events or observables that we currently have. We can then add the books observable to the material card using book dollar sign and then we'll use the async pipe so that we can assign that to a variable using let book. Once we do that we can access book.title using the handlebars. You should now see the current title that you're on showing up on the page. So we are successfully accessing the book from Firestore for anything else that we may need pulled back. First Angular material components that we'll be using are the form field and the input for our title. We'll update this, pull it out of the card title and start using it for input to update the book. We'll then add a section for each component and in this case we're going to add a section with a material form field and then the input. We need to remember that in our book edit module we will now need to include the material form field module as well as the material input module. You can see here instead of outputting title we've now set up the ng model for this to associate to the book title. The next setup actually involves two of the components. One will be the material slide toggle and the second will be the autocomplete. We're going to use the toggle to determine whether it is a fiction book or a non-fiction book and then provide the data for the autocomplete component based on what the slide toggle is positioned to. If you're doing this and following along in your own database, you'll need to create a config collection that has a book document. Inside of this book document, there will be two arrays, one called fiction and one called nonfiction. It's an array of strings for our two genres. 
Next, we'll create an interface based on the current Firestore model that we created using NGGI, and then it'll be core models config book. And what this will allow us to do is specify the two string arrays that we'll have for fiction and nonfiction. Inside of the Firestore service.ts file under core services, we will update this to have a function called git config book, and we'll direct that towards the config slash book that we outlined in Firestore. This will bring back the fiction and nonfiction array along with all the rest of the config. We'll start by adding a new section for the material slide toggle component. You'll notice that the checked has a fiction selected item as well as the change has a function call to a fiction change passing the event. We we'll also need to remember to add the material slide toggle module to our book edit module. We can now add the material autocomplete component in order to do this, we need to associate an input to the material autocomplete component by tying out the directive mat autocomplete and tie it to auto. Auto is a local template instance variable that is exposing out the panel for mat autocomplete to our input component class. We'll take a look at adding the function for fiction change, and that was for our toggle. What we're going to do here is set a class parameter called fiction selected every time that's updated. We'll then take and get the book config from our Firestore git config book, and this will give us the observable that we want to take a look at. We're going to pipe the observable so that we're only taking the first value, and then we will subscribe to it and pass the book config into a function so that we can look at all the value changes that are happening on the genre control. So as a user types and enters values into the genre control, we'll pass those in and filter one of our two array lists. Depending on which way the slide toggle is, it will either be our fiction or our nonfiction, and we will send that out in our next stream for the behavior subject on the class parameter genre list that our panel is looking at for its values. Next up is the checkbox component. We're gonna pull these values from the book config once again. You can see here in Firestore that we've included in config book and then you have options. Because we already set up our book config observable, we can just access that using the async pipe and say local variable for book config. And then we can get all the options in the map that we've set up. Once again, don't forget to import the mat checkbox module into our book edit module. Next up is the date picker component. This allows a calendar to be added with a pop-up and you can choose what date you'd like to select and it'll add it back to an input field. For the date picker, we're not gonna be choosing any values from Firestore. Just know that we will have to have the four picker to match up to the picker in the input. In the next lesson, we'll be covering how to customize what date is set for the book currently for its published date. When importing the mat date picker module, you will also need the mat native date module. For the material select component, we're going to be picking the age categories for a book. This will be coming from Firestore once again under the book config. We once again are looking at the book config, so we'll use that async pipe and then grab the age category property. We're going to loop through this to detail out all of the mat options for the material selection. For the material, for the angular material slider option, we're going to use this for determining the rating of a book. You can see that we'll set the minimum value to one and the max to five with a step ratio of 0.5. We've set the ng model to book rating and we'll default this to three so all of the books start at a three value. Again, don't forget to add the mat slider module into book edit module. The final component is the radio button. We'll use this to determine whether or not our book is draft or published state. We again aren't pulling this value from Firestore, but we're gonna set the default book status to draft. This may work better with a numeric setting for the value. At this time, you should be able to import the mat radio module into the book edit module, and you'll have basically the kitchen sink of components. 
In this lesson, we pulled in all of the Angular Material components into our book edit form and are able to use them. The values from them were coming from Firestore. In the next lesson, we'll be using reactive forms to tie all of this data together, add validation, and then update Firestore for our individual book detail. I love helping out people, so if you're in the YouTube channel, you can hit that Slack button up in the top right corner. This will drive you into a area where you can uh, join our Slack channel. You can ask me questions at any time or anyone else that might be on the channel, and we're here to help you out. Thanks again for watching.